Everybody's here. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Second. You did. Yeah. We'll follow the agenda. We have um, a mural program. You need to vote. You need. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to vote. All those in favor? All those in favor. Yeah. All right. And Marty, can you speak closer to the microphone? A little bit closer? I can hear you. Thank you. I'd be happy to start the discussion. It is a draft. It's something that um, Christina Owens, the previous liaison, put together. Um, and so what I'd like to recommend, um, if you guys can discuss amongst yourself, I don't know if you've had a chance to review it yet, but if we could possibly get uh, maybe two commissioners um, to work with me to um, clean it up a little bit, clean up the language, make sure that it uh, meets the goals that we want it to meet, and then come back and at the next meeting and present a more um, comprehensive draft for approval. Well, um, I certainly would volunteer to be guilty of now, and I'll volunteer. Here. I'll volunteer. Ad hoc. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ad hoc committee. Yeah. And there's a page missing, I don't know if you realize that, but page, page three and four were the same, so there's a page missing here in this document. Yeah, yes, there was. We have corrected copies here for you. I apologize. Wait. Oh. These are corrected copies of the Or if we just want to bring it back next time, then? I, I would like to put it on the agenda for next time, and then that will give us an opportunity to, to meet. Without? Um, Establishing um, uh, 
uh, more advisory boards and taking a look at the different types of commissions that we have right now, seeing how we can better serve the community with sort of a different makeup of how uh, an organization of how we um, deal with public art. Um, one of the things that you know we have that we uh, work with is the Center for the Arts. We have a, a nonprofit board with the city contracts with the management agreement. And there's been some discussion about whether or not maybe it makes sense to fold the role and responsibilities of the Public Art Commission and have them be staffed by members of uh, the uh, team over at the Center for the Arts. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Jerry Van Loon, former Community Services Director, used to work here at the city, he's the executive director there at the Center for the Arts. They have a pretty robust team over there. And um, it, it uh, kind of falls in the sink, if you will, with the focus that the Center for the Arts has, you know, with regards to the, uh, the visual arts program that they have, the museum program, um, as well as the art that they have on campus. Uh, we have with them a management agreement that runs five years, and it's coming up for renewal in October. So we kind of broached the topic with them, hey, uh, what are your thoughts, uh, CCAD uh, board, of working with the uh, city's commission transition the responsibilities of sort of what staff does with the commission here and have it uh, be folded into what the Center for the Arts Board does and, and their membership and, and make up of their organization. So they're open to that idea. We have not put together anything in writing yet, so as far as who would do what and what the responsibilities would be. Uh, but I kind of wanted to bring this to you today, kind of have a conversation about it, um, points to that to make sure that we move in this direction with the Center for the Arts, we want to see integrated in with it. Um, so part of it has to do also with what the city sees as its core responsibilities to the citizens. And there's some, what are the duplicate service provided, we have a public arts commission, and then we have a whole Center for the Arts board that deals with public art in the community and, and on their site. Uh, and I see the programs and the services that they provide and how it would dovetail with what the, the Public Art Commission does and how that might work out really well. So with that, I kind of want to open up the discussion and get your thoughts on that. Uh, again, we haven't put anything to paper at this point. So right now we have our quarterly meetings that the staff uh, handles. We've had a recent transition, as you're aware, with, with the, um, um, the uh, former staff of Karen and Christina. And I don't know, when you brought into why that decision and why that move was made? No. So the, uh, the Funding that goes for paying for the salaries of Karen Ewell and all of her staff are from various sources that deal with housing related programs. To have their staff, like Christina, work on public art really isn't within the definitions of what the dollars that we get from other sources say can be spent for their salaries. So, with that, we have to find another set of staff to be your liaisons, if you will, to uh, ensure that we're complying with. So we looked at the Community Services Department uh, as um, being that staff and we had the opportunity to work with Danielle and Joanna. But then the broader discussion, and we were having a little bit of this discussion uh, before we just transitioned to Community Services, the time we just all seemed to come together at once. Uh, the broader discussion of what is kind of the core service or what are the core services that the city should be providing to its residents. Is public art a core service? Um, what other types of programs or um, institutions we have in the community that are already funded by the city that might make a good fit for the, um, the public art commission uh, and well, how that might work if we were to transition it. Uh, in talking with the mayor and select members of the council, they feel that public art is an important thing for the community. They definitely want to see that, that happen and that continue. We have a, a lot of public art in the community that has been um, put uh, out there based on this group's uh, involvement and much appreciated. And we have a lot of public art that we need to maintain. So all that is critical. We can't just close our eyes and close the door and say that's done or all done with it. Um, at the same time, taking a look at other organizations that the city sponsors, like the Center for the Arts, and how that might work as sort of the liaison to a public art commission or a advice report, depending on what the, the mayor and council decide they want to do with their boards and commissions. Seems to make sense to us to have mm -hmm. that be a, sort of a, a natural transition. Um, you deal with sort of like-minded staff. They have they have a very big dosing program there. I talked with Jerry, and he's uh, looking at potentially expanding that.
that to provide more opportunities that with Bolivia. Uh, and ACD that is tying in with their broader mission of providing public art, you know, whether it be visual or performing arts, um, to the community, uh, that this would be a good fit for them. So, you know, uh, uh, Danielle or Joanne, if you have any other comments or love to hear your perspectives as well. Mission? So, so far, I, I agree with everything. I mean, we've been kind of been doing this with little baby steps along the way. Working together when um, uh, when the museum had the uh, big art exhibit and, and uh, to Nikki Day St. Paul and uh, the Queen Felicia as well as Nikki as an international artist. And uh, I had done some cross training with the docents at the museum and some of our docents so that we were all on the same page. and. That was just, it was really, um, it just it just felt good because we're both doing the same thing and when we merged on this and shared all of this, it just, I think it just really enhanced the whole um, recognition of we're, we're all working towards the same goal in our world. Um, and uh, everything you said, without working out all of the details of it. I think it would be uh, an outstanding fit. Uh, I've always hoped for something like that so when you reach people, art is not just one facet of your life. And certainly you have an art center, you have an art museum, and you have an yeah. internationally mm -hmm. artist uh, you know, piece here that not gone unnoticed, but in some respects unappreciated for, for what it is that we have. And it's just, to me, it's as big an asset as any of the performances in any of the exhibits. And so, I mean, I'm very on board and very excited um, with, uh, with the merge like this. Yeah, I agree. I think it makes sense. It, it's, it's more cohesive. We should be one part of a big, bigger body instead of being a separated entity, right? Um, my only concern I was thinking as you were speaking is what about when it comes to money and budget? Uh, because we do have one, would it be under that? And can that, those money be moved anywhere else? I mean, doesn't it get a little gray there? Good question, and those topics have come up. So for the rest of the commission's benefit, of our fee that we charge in construction. It's a small amount of pennies per It's 30 foot. cents per square foot. So that goes into an account and has to be spent on new public art. And I spend it on maintenance or repair. So those come under the general fund expenses. Uh, and talking with staff and with some of the arts, we, there's been no direction from council to eliminate that fee. So we'd still be collecting that fee. The commission would have, the way I would envision this, the commission or the, through the Center of the Arts would have access to this fee for the public art program. So it couldn't be spent on things that are not directly related to the public art program as defined in the ordinance that establishes the commission. Um, the city would still be responsible for the maintenance of all of the, the um, current public art that's in the community. So if a vehicle happens to run down or run into one of the obelisks on that's the Boulevard, which just happened in the past. Uh, our public arts crew, or I mean, our public works crew would be out there, you know, doing the, the um, immediate repair or at least safeguarding the area. And then, uh, and then as far as contracting with the repairs, we would uh, kind of work with the Center for the Arts as far as that goes. But, but their staff would not be doing that work. It, um, so there still would be a lot of city connection to the, um, to the program because of so uh, our kind of where we see the Center for the Arts being uh, the main assistance uh, for the commission's work is, is being a more hands-on liaison, if you will. Right now, we kind of scale back our public art commission's needs to one supporter uh, and recognizing the limitations of our housing staff serving as your staff liaison. We've been very limited in doing, doing any kind of public art program. It's really kind of been focused on the repairs 
So um, uh, through our commitment to the Center for the Arts, we could provide a more broader and more um, in-depth focus on the public art program because of just the nature of the Center for the Arts and its roles and responsibilities. Thank you. I would like, I would like to see There, there is a, a lot of uh, particular things that just the Public Art Commission has to work with as far as each individual piece that we have, the entire collection, any new projects that we're, we're uh, attending to, and the way that the, um, the structures are for meetings, um, nothing can, can get done. I mean, very simply, it's just not getting done. Um, and in the, in the midst of this, we need to at least meet ourselves and work on our projects then to take up valuable time in a, in a large board meeting and, and that sort of thing. So whenever we can uh, meet ourselves and then come up with a proposal of whatever it is we want to move forward, and then be able to present it rather than just joining into and making it a bigger board mm -hmm. that still can't get anything done. <laughs> because you know, there's, there's just not enough time of day for all of this. So um, I mean, to talk about the past a little bit, we were with community services years ago, and we had a much larger uh, commission at the time. And, it was almost too large to get sufficient work done. So somewhere a happy medium from just a handful to a room full in order to get our projects done in a timely manner and to stay on top of the things, especially in restoration with this larger collection that we have. Um, so I, I'm just, I love the idea of the merger and we're all working together, but I, uh, I just feel very strongly about being able to function as a, as a commission and get some jobs done, not five years out, because we only need four times a year. I have a question to you. So the way, are, the way I hear it is we would be under the guidance of the, of the Center for the Arts, basically. They would be our umbrella, right? They would be, they would be your liaison to the city. Would we continue, like she is asking, as an independent commission, or what? Would we be an independent commission, like public art commission, or? or so the, the council is looking at what they want to do with all current existing Okay. Okay. Um, the mayor's kind of moving uh, in the direction of having what are called uh, advisory. Oh. Kind of advisory boards, yeah. which might, and I, I need to check from a legal standpoint how that would change from the context of a commission to an advisory board. I see. They might have oh, more interesting. freedom as an advisory board as yeah. opposed to a commission which has a forum and So, um, but that also gives you more flexibility to either have more people or look at, at um, uh, public art in a different way as far as how you, you go through the process of it. So, the public art commission has some unique uh, nuances to it in that I think the membership itself is made up of qualified, certain qualified people that are beyond just your regular kind of interested in public art type of person. They have to have you know, a public art background or an art background. Which I might add that. Which means that maybe we could even meet more often well, then. Definitely. 
Yeah. So basically, when you're saying we're restructuring the whole thing in a way, right? So to have more flexibility, to have more input perhaps from the public in a more less formal way. Although I have to say, this room doesn't make it any less formal. On the contrary, this is pretty threatening, I think, to the community to come and talk, you know, speak here and be part of it. But sounds interesting. Uh, the money, going back to that 30 cents per square footage, then would be part of the Center for the Arts uh, entity. And then it would filter down to the different uh, boards, advisory boards, or projects. Projects. The, the public art fee that is charged for building permits is for the installation of public art projects. So the, the so, Center for the Arts could not use it to fund a program that they wanted to do, and any of the public art projects that are being funded have to go through a committee process where it's, it's vetted, it's been approved. And it's okay. Through, uh, yeah, okay. Sure so we should. Uh, Jade, the question I had uh, is um, the hierarchy. So we would answer to the Center for the Arts, and the Center for mm -hmm. the Arts answers to you. To the city, correct. To the city. To and so um, it's been great to be on the uh, Public Arts Commission, but it, by meeting so frequently, yeah. there's so little that gets yes. done. And there's by the time we meet again, God, but you're, I mean, it really the notes are great, but you know, and there is no forward momentum. So I look forward to being on a committee or an advisory board that you know, all not only loves art and uh, appreciation for it, but also want to um, get something done. And I can tell you that the current Center for the Arts board, the board of trustees that, that they meet once a month, uh, and I also sit on the finance subcommittee. Uh, as a voting member uh, from the city's side, and that also is once a month. So they have a pretty once a month format, mm -hmm. standing format, quite a few of their subcommittees and, and groups. So I can see this whole thing that. Sounds good. I like it. I think the only question that I have is in, in the past, uh, a lot of people uh, made comments on. We don't meet often enough. We, just, we don't know who is going to be uh, making the decisions on, for example, a mural or on a group of murals or where the murals will be located because that can hammer and hang up uh, getting it done. So, uh, how much say will we have in it or if we set a group up uh, to make those decisions and then take them to you? With the help of the staff, how we can handle that so this so we can have a, a one year, three year, five year project, and be able to show it to the council. Well, uh, where we're going for five year, three year, two year. Yeah. So in the in the public art commission ordinance that sets up the, the structure of the commission, it, there is a process for how public art is vetted through um, from conception to installation, uh, and it involves a lot of public outreach. It involves with the city that the location is appropriate and it's been uh, approved and from um, you know, the safety standpoint and all that, that it, it's something that can be constructed as, as a people whole and then it goes through the formal process. Uh, so I don't see that changing per se as far as still needing to get city approvals for locating art in the public right of way or on public property. Uh, and then there's also the public art on private property, which Right. So um, I don't think much of that is going to change the, the structure of how public art is approved in the community. Yeah, what I see changing is really who you will report to, how often you will be able to report, and the resources that will be available to you. So you would meet almost like the Open Center for the Arts, where they have you know meeting rooms where they have board meetings, uh, and um, uh, they're advertised to the public, and, and the public not much of the public usually comes to the board meetings or the, the um, understood. Well, some of my, my other questions would be um, in other boards that I've served on, I think when we've had to make decisions on art, 
and you had a large uh, group of people that want to have a part of the state, you, you wind up just arguing over what color and yellow uh, you're going to have, and Essence not going to get stuck. Yeah. And I'm looking at what other cities are doing, and there is an explosion of mural art, street art, going in all over uh, North County, let alone the rest of the country. And some cities are just, with all of the new buildings that we have going in, the young people coming in, the apartments, the condos, they're going to want a place to go, something to see, something to be part of. And that's what I think we have to be careful with, where it doesn't bog down, and we have opportunities to try. Uh, and I would agree with you. So that would be, if there's something in the current world is that, that precludes that, precludes that, it doesn't allow it to happen, you want to see that change, that, that is something that can happen. Mm -hmm. Amending an ordinance that is, that is structured by, uh, or this current policy, the way that it's evolved over time, that can be changed even easier than an ordinance. But I would agree with you to, to the extent that it's not our by committee, you know, to the extent that everybody's weighing in on yeah. a particular color, you really have to think of artists free reign. That's I think really what you're looking at. Thanks. Yeah. Another question? It's not a good idea. Good idea. <laughs> so we'll, as we're, uh, my next uh, responsibility is to work with the Center for the Arts and to uh, establish sort of the, or not sort of, to establish the parameters by which the, this group will operate under their leadership and organization. And I will get back to you on, and I'll probably forward you information individually as a group as opposed to when you have next year. So are Daniel and Joanna still with us, or are they going to be gone? <laughs> I mean, they're part of the city staff, not the California Correct. centers. So Daniel and Joanna are city staff, so you do work with a completely new set of Okay, cases. all right. Um, we have had our staff out there, our public works staff, 
as well as our IT staff. They've identified the locations for um, the poles that new security cameras will be placed on. So those are on order once they arrive. I'm sorry, I don't have an exact timeline on that, but they are on order. Um, the cameras will be installed and then we'll have um, much better surveillance of uh, the queen than we've had in the past. How many? I want to say four. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say it's four. And they, they can record at night, right? Yes. Okay. Right now we have two. Is that correct? I think so. I believe so. I've seen them in the trees, so I assume they are working. Okay. Yeah. But and are they new, Danielle? The ones in the tree, they are. They're temporary. Though. But they were put there after the vandalism. Yes. Okay. But those two cameras didn't give us any information about the, the problem, right? Like, no. The, nothing, not, they, nothing. They were not. Um, there was an issue with the recording, I believe, when the initial, when the vandalism took place. So the cameras that are there now are different than what was there. So they are working, uh, but they are temporary until the, until the new equipment comes in. Right. And then as far as the repairs, they started last week. I don't know if anyone's been out there, but um, the repairs started last week, and LEC has uh, two months to complete the work. So I'm sure it will be done in, in, sooner than that, but just so you know, it will be done in the, within the next two months, all the repairs to the, to the tiles. To the glass? Yes. The mirrors? Mm -hmm. Snake, the snake, is that part of that um, three, pair? Let me, let me just look at the contract real quick. There's three areas. So it's the mirror restoration, the cat head totem, and the bird totem. So what's going to happen to the snakes? I mean, the styles are falling and they're getting larger and larger. I mean, they're exposed to sun and rain and, you know, and it's getting worse. Something needs to be done before they lose all the tiles. Well, I'll have to make note of that, and we'll talk to him about what he would recommend be done. So it's the star. I'm sorry, can you repeat what it is, the stars on the snake? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah the snakes, I mean, how many areas? That I know of about two or three, right? Two or three. Two or three, but they're getting larger by the day. And Danielle, it's a, it's the tiles on the on the snakes, snakes that are coming off in chunks of maybe one foot squares, at least. So I mean, and they've been off since I've been dosing at least a year, two years, possibly. So those are the areas that you're referring to, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. On that on that snake wall, um, I have spoken with Lex like probably almost a year ago now, and it seems as though there's some question um, on how they're going to have to, they can't just patch it. So they're going to have to even remove a whole lot more and maybe rework the skin, which is that fiberglass skin that you see. That, that was some of the comments that were made in the repair process of that. Um, there was, and now I'm, just, I'm not positive of, but one of the repairs, I believe it was the snake, was the color of the tiles, and that some of the tiles that are coming off, he doesn't have the replacement tiles that will match. Mm -hmm. So then that has to go through the foundation in order to keep the integrity of the artwork to get approval. So it's it's not just a neglect issue the way I understand it. It's kind of a compound thing. So um, you might ask him if all of that is still relevant, especially the fact that more and more high is coming up. Yeah. What is striking is the safety issue about that because uh, they, they're coming off in sheets rather than just a few pebbles and this sort of thing. And um, of course, we Yeah, it would, I think it would be very beneficial to all of the doses to have a better feel for it. Are we neglecting 
Okay, I'll have a conversation with him and then I'll update the commission and the doses as well. Danielle, the other uh, security, not security, the repair concern is the, um, where the egg, uh, the, the, the water goes, went at some point beneath that, so there's a rug laying on the, uh, yeah. the, the flooring floor. underneath it is all chopped up, so, um, it, so the rug that's on there is sort of laying there loosely, and it could be a, um, just something that could, someone could trip on. But that, that is something, if you could ask them about that, what can be done about that? Yeah. So it's the rug that's under the egg that's not No, it's not under the egg. There's, when, um, when the egg was damaged and they broke the water line and the water wicked under the flooring of the, the round discs, the individ those are individual tiles, mm -hmm. and that had wicked up so it forced them to ripple. So they can go on in and painstakingly repair all of that. That's why some of it is a little lighter and colored. Mm -hmm. There is one piece that the ground, according to that, when I talked to him, the ground itself doesn't want to settle for some reason. So that particular strip, um, they've redone it a couple times, and it keeps popping up. I don't know what it would take to stabilize the, the ground underneath, but if they can't get that section done, we've got to do something before somebody has to trip and fall because yeah. it's spreading, yeah. as they all do, because it's not a single sheet. Mm -hmm. It's a section about two feet by about 15 feet, so yeah. it is, yeah. um, and it's made of a, it's a very light material, so if it's windy, it moves, and then underneath there is just fragments. So it's going to be a non-skid thing for safety yes. issues. Something heavier. It's been there for a long time. So yes. Even if it was working in the beginning to keep it more stable when people walk across it, it no. doesn't have that capability now. It's okay. just flopping around, and more ties are coming up. OK. <laughs> we'll bring that up as well. Thank you. Um, signage. Anna Marie, can you use yes. that too? Yes. Yeah. To so the signage is very minimal, uh, as you probably know. I don't know if you do know. but So there's a tiny line, uh, a small sign near the pond, before you get to the pond, that, show, that tells you that Queen Califia is open. It does only include the Tuesday, Thursday, and second Saturday. The fourth Saturday has not been included, even though we've been already open a year and a half. Um, so that, and it's very small, by the way. You know, if you're not looking for it, you don't see it. And then right outside the fence where the Queen Califia is, there's a very old style that doesn't even have the hours correctly. They're peeling off. It really needs to be removed. And so um, my idea was that if we could replace it with something that gives you the flexibility to change schedule time without having to just put a sticky thing on top. This is what they have now, it's like a little sticker, you know, covering the, the schedule that it used to be. So something they would allow to say, okay, now we're open uh, three days a week instead of two, and we can just move it, and so on. And the other sign is by the parking lot behind. That also does not include the fourth Saturday. And then the wooden sign that is on the road, the inside road of the, like the one that goes to the school, had graffiti. And it was cleaned up, but it's pretty messy. It, it, it looks pretty bad. It needs to be cleaned up. You said the wooden sign? It's a big wooden sign that points to Queen Califia and a few other other items in the park, but it's, it was you know it was graffiti a long time ago. And it was cleaned up but not well, not well done. But the most important is that the people we get on the fourth Saturday, oh you're open. Yeah, we've been open a year and a half. Oh we didn't know that. And not everybody goes into the, the website. That's the thing. So 
we need to make it official, right? One of the doses that is on the fourth Saturday is here. So there's been uh, discussion about the fourth Saturday and uh, and that sort of thing, and um, it has been considered a pilot program, and as far as I know, that uh, that hadn't taken place, and there are some issues specifically about. Um, the managing of the fourth Saturday and following the guidelines that the docents need to follow. So whether or not that is discussed at today's meeting, I'll uh, we'll leave it up to staff, or we can discuss it at another time. I wasn't aware of that. Could you be more specific? The procedures. Everybody has been. In, but everybody has been trained and done. We've been doing it for a year and a half. So what, what is not being followed? Uh, well, for, for one thing, most assuredly, is we're not aware of who actually is, is out there. And we do have to address uh, names and addresses and other people that are brought in um, as substitutes uh, for, for uh, sitters that have not been trained or we don't even have any information on them. The liability says it's very important that we stay with our um, registered volunteers uh, to keep this going um, efficiently and, and uh, liability wise. We've, we've been fortunate, but it's just a matter of time before uh, something's going to occur. Uh, also, the two doses that are required for Saturday work must be, I, I feel very strongly about this, it must be maintained for good customer service and primarily the liability and safety issues. And that has to be done. I agree and I think um, we, the DOSA meeting that you are calling in May, mm -hmm. um, I think we can address all those issues. On the city, from the city standpoint, we are looking at our volunteer program right now. Um, so we'll be bringing to that meeting a number of things that um, uh, have come to light that you know will need to be done. You know, volunteers will need to sign certain sign off on certain policies and things like that. So we'll be bringing that all to that DOSIN meeting and going over that all in detail. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I didn't know there was a volunteer meeting in May. Um, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, the email went out about. Two weeks ago? Yeah. It was posted? I sent it to every dose. Okay, so I need to. Okay. Okay, the other correction. Okay. Um, all the members that have been in the fourth Saturday, uh, Christina has the name, address, and phone numbers. I gave them to her when we started, pretty much. Uh, we have been two. Um, Doses from the 12 to 2 o'clock uh, shift. The other ones have been done by 1 and 1. We haven't had any security problems or issues at all so far. Uh, so I don't see that as a condition for the fourth Saturday to be open. Um, I do think that our main goal as public art commissioner is to make sure that that public art is open as most you know as much as possible. So yeah, the two dosing requirement, I don't agree with it at all. We've been doing it and we haven't had a problem. So as far as the you probably talk about the substitutes, yeah, that that might be an issue because but yeah, that could be an issue. I would just like to again at our meeting um, go over the actual policy and procedures that are in writing that were approved by the Public Art Commission uh, when the, uh, the Queen was reopened some, I think it was three years ago, after the long stay, and, and um, most of that appears either in the minutes or in, um, in the policies that we've reviewed. So, and, I, I, and uh, not only do I feel strongly about it, I think it's, it's uh, it's just good sense to have a, a safety requirement and that everybody should abide by the same procedures if they're going to be in the 
I agree. I agree. I agree too. Training should be formalized for everybody. Yes. So we'll touch on all those things at the uh, at the meeting in May. Is there a date, a specific date already? I believe it's May third. Maybe the second. Here? I don't know where it's going to be. Here? It's in the Mitchell room. Is it going to be in the Mitchell room? No. We are part of the signage. I, it kind of is repairs and signage. Slash is as you come in, and, uh, I know recently, as a year ago, the, the, um, the, as you come in on the right hand side, there, it talks about Mickey, and mm -hmm. there's a plastic over the top that looks like someone has picked through it. I know it it's, looks like it's metal underneath, so, but it still looks like it needs some, uh, and that doesn't look like a leg thing, but it, um, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, oh, the new, the new, it, no, it's the big informational boards, those informational boards. The informational board, and this one in, in particular is about her, has her picture there. And over her picture, it's been picked through. So, um, and that's been that way for probably six months. And I've, I've talked to people about it. But anyway, just now that you're here and you got your ear, I thought I'd mention that too. Mm. Issues. Um, I know the foundation has some restrictions about the fund. Mm -hmm. You know, because we wanted to go with much grandiose, and they have those little colored snake things that you can barely notice. So, between the foundation's restrictions, I know those signs, unless they change their mind and will allow us. I know, I'm not sure, I don't think that there's a size limitation as far as from a city standpoint. I think it's, it would have to go through the appearance committee, things like that. But I know uh, that those directional signs with the arrows, I think a lot of them are faded. And Christina did mention that there is um, a bunch of them, maybe 15 or so, that are in the public's works yard. So I was going to look into maybe getting the ones that are not in so good shape. Um, replaced so that it would help. Because I think a lot of them are so faded out by the sun that they need to be people repainted. can't see where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You're, you're out of luck, you have to find it. Um, any way you could find out if there's anything in writing about the foundation uh, requirement for signage? But that would be nice if we all have the same information. I'll look into that as well and get that information back to you guys. Thank you. And then volunteers was the next. Did you anyone want to talk about that specifically? 
I think that you, I'm assuming, want to get more volunteers. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you that. Um, that was something that I kind of touched on with Jay a little bit because there were docents that are at the museum that were very interested in, you know, cross training and, and that sort of thing, but it kind of got left behind with, with uh, everything else during the holiday <coughs> and after the show was closed. But I'd like to try to revisit that regarding the docents because they were at a presentation and they did get the handouts during the show with uh, our edition of the docent procedures for the queen. So they're aware of it. We just didn't have a chance really to follow up. And I, I think maybe we have a potential of, of picking up some additional professional docents from the museum if, if we can uh, pursue that and who's ever managing the museum and all that sort of thing. Kind of revisit that and if they want to participate, which would be wonderful, you know, to meet with them and, and uh, give them an idea. If they would come on board, they probably would be more eager now with the, the latest information that Jay introduced today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, um, can uh, we go ahead and move on? I see the time's getting away from us. The uh, staff liaison report. Unless you have any questions on that, that was just an update on two of the projects. I have one question. Okay. On the uh, <laughs> Okay. On the, on the refurbishment of the musical. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm that's moving forward. Um, are we going to put them back? They're going to be back home, located back where they were. Is there a reason? Yeah. We're going to put them back there and not have them out and better come to you? Because that was discussed, right? Right. Um, we had talked about even putting them on the lawn by the ticket booth across where Nikki's old pieces used to be. Okay. Um, for better visibility. I mean, people are always gathering there at every performance. Um, we just, uh, we're trying to consider that. Now, I don't know what it would take to mount them. We're going to have to dig up some grass and, and put some sort of uh, foundation to them to have them roll them down because over here it is all <coughs> concrete. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would be a huge task. But I would like to, to revisit that thought and, and have some input from the commission on, on relocating them to that area for better visibility. I misunderstood. I thought we had all agreed on that already somewhere. Way back then, we kind of even voted on it. So, yeah. Well, I looked in the yeah. and it came up. Mm -hmm. No, we just discussed where, come back with suggestions where you might want to see them. Um, and the, oh, one quick question, and they're not going to be musical anymore, are they? Uh, well, according to this, they are. They are? Seriously. Oh. Well, then it would be nice for them to be in more of a public area. I don't know if there was some preference uh, someone had that was higher than us, but... Um, yeah, why the discussion is to put them back. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know where it came from. But. Well, I would like to. Yeah, I don't know. Let me follow up with Christina and see sure. what the history around that was because I'm not, you know, being this yeah. first meeting, I'm not familiar with what that was. So I will check with her and see if that's something that they've discussed. 
There's only one concern about that area, even though we all agree it was a nice place to put them, it would be very interactive, uh, is that I've seen um, food trucks parked there for certain events, and they use that whole lawn area, make like a half a circle. So that would be oh, the one. Right. Yeah, yeah, right in front of the ticket office. Oh, yeah. The, the, the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually had trucks there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On uh, Dia de los Muertos, they had a half a circle there, and they had tables, and then they had the exhibit here. So I don't know if the center still wants to have that open space for whatever, then that would be an obstacle. But it would be nice to have them. So. Well, anyway, whatever, um, Marty, this is a time-sensitive issue because it's going to be ready in March, and I know Signpost probably has has them almost loaded with a truck to put them somewhere. So, I mean, there is some time-sensitive things that might have to occur for them to be put someplace else. They're going to be ready for installation. Uh, I'm reading here. It says, uh, yeah, in April. Middle of April is when they're supposed to be. Yeah. Right, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Let me talk with her and see what, what the background is. Mm -hmm. Go from there. And that will be completed by June. I'm looking at the budget, and uh, Queen Khalifa Education, you guys have been the ones of you who have been in the board for a while. What was that money, how was that money spent in the past? It, we haven't spent a penny, but how has it been spent in the past? I can't do that. Um, it's been spent on the brochures and things that you guys hand out to the public. So that's, that's considered education. So I was thinking if we could... So what are the restrictions for that amount of money? Is 30,000. That's basically for that, basically uh, promotion then, not, not just education, but promoting the place? That's correct. Yeah, you could say that. The, the, there, was, there was discussion at one time, and, and again, this whole question come up many times, uh, the, the, the change coming. Um, we published a book for the museum, right. and we had paid for that. And there was discussion about doing additional, um, I don't know what to call it really, books, but more than a brochure at one time. And um, that can be a very costly thing. So even though it's sitting there, that's the kind of thing that we were discussing, and we have discussed it several times. Uh, we were going to try to do something for the anniversary one year and, and this sort of thing. So um, that goes really fast when we talk about books and stuff mm. and brochures, full color stuff. Yeah. Um, it's really expensive. But I that don't... was pretty much what that was earmarked for to answer your question. Uh, I had uh, a couple, um, uh, not 
really sure. On the, um, the housing, what was the name? HRP grant project. Um, would that be open-ended for use of a public art program or? The funds for the HRP grant um, have to all be spent by June of this year. And from what we know and understand, this is the last cycle that those funds will be available. Oh. That total amount? What total amount was the, you say? For the blue granite shift, do you mean? No, let's see here. The update of, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. October 15th. Under the director's report, Karen uh, spoke about the restoration of public art pieces as part of the HRP grant project. So was that the money that was going to be used for the musical piece? No, the money is used for the Blue Granite Shift, as well as the Great Slide, I believe, mm -hmm. in the playground over here. Right. And I think, other, I, I think there was one other, but we didn't receive the um, estimates in time, so somebody got shifted. OK. I know that we were trying to get done, but we couldn't one get it was done turned down time. or something, and then she said, well, we had an opportunity to reapply, and I, I just kind of lost track of which direction it was going in. So, you, we don't have anything to tap on that. Does that come with well, all of yeah. All of the funding has been allocated to, to projects. There's no unallocated amount that we can pull from. Okay. And the, and the, the sand egg thing that um, came up. Maybe I've got my projects mixed up. We were talking about doing a project at one time on Grand Avenue and going to turn it right. I think that's the Grand Avenue know. Art Project for $300,000 mm -hmm. on the list. Um, that project is on um, hold in the engineering department right now, as far as the street improvement part of it. So when they, if that picks back up, then I'm sure that they'll um, come back to this project and so that is the one. That is the mm -hmm. um, I have a question with the pedestrian pathfinders. It's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I don't even know what that is. Can you clarify, somebody? That's a lot of money. Marty, do you know what that one is? Um, the pedestrian path, oh, it's been on there a long time, and quite honestly, I don't know, um, why it hasn't been addressed anymore. We tried to in the past, and it was like a project that was approved, and they're not going to take it off, but absolutely nothing has come forward about it. Um, the Escondido Creek project, um, that was looked at and didn't want to totally dissolve the whole thing, and Olga would be the best source because she was pushing that a lot, and I got the paperwork on it, but it come down significantly. I'm not sure if there was um, any merging on the projects, if the relationship between those two, but there could be, but I'm not ready to that that's the information. So, so we need to find out. Yeah, we can check with Christina on that. I know the, the Grand or the uh, Escamino Creek Art, I think they're probably just holding off. They're doing other improvements. Um, they're, you know, the fencing, the lighting, lighting. the city. And so I think it's Inch. just, yeah, they don't, the timing is probably just not right to be installing art just yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it seemed like those two were, were somehow, they suddenly became related. Mm -hmm. So if the, I may be way off base, but that would be another mistake. 
Because that, that's a big chunk of money that is sitting there. All right. So on the next agenda, we'll have the mural policy. Right. right. And then we'll also have the California Center of the Arts um, coming to speak about their um, electronic mural program or project. And, more, and what about the signs? What's going to happen to that? I'll update you about the signs before the next meeting. OK. Thanks. You'll be in contact with Marty, or Marty will be in contact with you concerning the mural yes. uh, updates yeah. for next meeting. Thank you. Did you mention something about the tower you wanted to talk about this evening? That's the California Center of the Arts. California Center of the Arts. It's a project for the tower at the center of the Arts. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I got it all. Yes. Should we have another discussion or what is the best time to bring up what we think is possible or be able to get into the responsibility for it? Uh, raising funds, grants. Do we need a grant writer on this mission? Um, that would be a great That's idea. I think we should look at going forward because we're going to need a lot of money. We're going to be doing the uh, murals, and uh, one of the things that the mission to do is raise funds and getting somebody to start getting in contact with. Uh, it could be some staff with uh, the assembly people because they've got a couple of million, I think about two million dollars right now that they just give away. And I first went up with them when I was a raise. And I talked to the guys and talked to them. They finally said, I said, I'll get out of country. And they just said, Aren't you going to ask for money? That's your job. <laughs> Our job is to give it to you. And uh, 20 years ago, I learned something. But I think we could, I don't know, get tied in across the street if we would be part of that, but I think we should have some ideas. So would you like to put that on the agenda for discussion for next week? If, if uh, anybody thinks we should have a discussion on um, having a grant writer, I mean, do we hire one? Do we train one? Well, I think, I think maybe that can be, we're going to be reviewing this whole mural document, yeah. document this, mm -hmm. this program that we have the draft on. And I think if we keep certainly in mind with how we want to set this up, we'll give us a better idea on how much money we're going to have to, have to go forward. Um, and how it may or may not qualify for actual grants that are out there versus just, uh, I mean, even a fundraising project as in, for lack of a better term, like Friends of the Library, we have Friends of Nikki, and establishing that to mm -hmm. ease up some financial burden on that side so that we can loosen up on the other side. So just, I'm just, throwing out different ways that um, to see if, if a grant writing we would even qualify for that or how that would how we would fit into that. Because that's so often there's money out there but do we really fall into the criteria for it? Would it be with us or would it be with across the street? That's another thing would we fall under them or be part of it or on our own. Well, that's, that's we would be under probably under the California. Um, I, I don't. I don't think so. I, but then I'm just. I'm just guessing if, if we are the commission, as um, there's other commissions that also are involved in different kind of projects. You know, it may be it may be a joint effort. We we 
yard is still going to receive the money from new construction from the developers, um, and um, that's always a good thing for any kind of ongoing uh, project of a smaller dollar amount versus piling it all in on one huge art project. Because the mural projects won't be one huge project. Um, so possibly it's manageable on its own without one big chunk of money. Um, and more people benefit with the mural program, I think, than yeah. the other way around. Uh, the, the mural project probably will be an ongoing thing for years to come. I mean, we started, you know. But um, one question. So for the next meeting, uh, if we could find out uh, about the pedestrian path, find it, that money, if it's not going to be used for that, since we don't even know what it is, maybe it could be transferred for our future mural project. I mean, uh, the average uh, mural cost at uh, Lompoc, well, they have... They said it was about 10,000, so look at how many murals we could, we could finance with those 150. So we have money to start, if we can move it. Okay, and any other discussion? Just my last question, can we bring up a discussion sometime next meeting on how often we should meet? We didn't come to any thing, finally, I think. How often should we meet? He, um, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the person who was here. What is his name? Uh, okay. He meant, he said yes, because we're going to get restructured, and I think he said for sure. Well, let's not jump to on that. None of that's going to take place until October. So as I see it right now, we're going to stay on the same schedule that we are. So our meetings won't be as frequent if we have to establish a subcommittee to solve some issue or to research some issue. I think we should certainly can do that to benefit ourselves, but, um, so, you know, uh, it's, it's, for right now, uh, I think we're just going to have to stick with the schedule that we have and go forward one, one problem issue at a time. That's <laughs> kind of the way I feel. Before we go into the other part. Adjourn? Thank you. We adjourn? Okay. Thank you. Shall we press here? The yellow one? <laughs> Thank you.